Hey, I'm Jalen, and we're so glad to have you with us today. Our vision here at Mercy Culture is to take people from corporate encounters with God to personal encounters with God. If this is your first time watching, comment new and someone from our team will connect with you. You can now become a member of Mercy Culture from anywhere in the world. So comment and let us know where you're watching from. If you have kids, make sure to check out MC Kids content at mercyculture.com. Our hope is that you meet God in a powerful way through this service and that you encounter His presence everywhere. Now, let's welcome the Holy Spirit as we enter into worship.
he's in the room, nothing can stand. No spirit can stand in this place. We sang a song that says, Lord, I'm gonna give you everything because when he's here, you need nothing but him. There's nothing that you need but Jesus. I love this church. I love the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We love you. We love you, God. Well, welcome to Mercy Culture Church. My name is Joe Martinez, and uh, Mercy Culture, we love God. Obviously, we love people, and we love mercy. Before you have a seat, I just wanted to give a shout out to our online campus. Hello, we love you. We love you. I, I have a special love for our online campus because they can't be here in this moment, but they're experiencing the Lord in their homes. We want to give a special shout out to Rochelle Wilson, Watson Wilson Walters from Abilene, Texas. We got the city name right. I love you. Come visit. You can smack me in the face if you want. I love you guys. Before you are seated, love on some people. Mercy Culture, I'm Maritza. Mercy Culture exists to take people from corporate encounters with God to daily personal encounters with God. If this is your first time, text the word NEW to 817-835-9090 so we can get to know you. And as an added bonus, we'll donate $10 to a nonprofit organization who supports survivors of human trafficking. If you want to learn more about Mercy Culture or how to get involved, MC Connect is your next step. MC Connect is designed to help you connect with God with a daily ministry plan and to help you connect with community through serving and MC groups. For more information, text the word CONNECT to 817-835-9090 or visit our website, mercyculture.com. Here at Mercy Culture, we believe in giving God our first and our best. We honor God as a personal act of worship through our tithes and our offering. There are three ways you can give. You can text the word GIVE to 817-835-9090, visit our website at mercyculture.com backslash give, or you can mail us at 1701 Oakhurst Scenic Drive, Fort Worth, Texas 76111. Watch parties are still happening. Make sure to share about your watch party on social media by tagging at Mercy Culture. Thanks for being with us today. To stay connected, follow us on social media or visit us at mercyculture.com. Hi, I'm Ross Rains. I'm Audra. And this is our Heart for Mercy testimony. Um, I guess it's been, it's been right at a year ago now. Um, and we were planning and preparing and praying for uh, what the Lord would have us give for Heart for Mercy. And uh, as we're praying, we were like, man, I don't know. I don't know what we're supposed to give. And so we just kept pressing in. And we both were in unity on a number that God, I, we felt like at that moment God gave us. Not fully sure, but we were like, okay, this is something. It's, it's somewhat of a sacrifice. And so we had an agreement going in uh, to, that, to that night. And uh, we're worshiping and enjoying, enjoying this whole time. And in the middle of worship, I hear the Lord say very plain and clearly this other number that was not our existing number. Mm -hmm. And I was like, first off, like, oh my goodness, if we give this amount, our bank account's gonna go in the red next week. And the second thing was, Audra's gonna think I'm absolutely nuts. But at the same time I'm hearing all this, Audra has a side of the story. So I'm worshiping and I tend to see uh, pictures in my mind and the clouds go by in my mind and I start to see a number. And I'm like, that's weird. That's just a random number in the clouds. And right about that time, he leans over and he whispers, 
hey, I think we're actually supposed to give this much money. And I was like, yeah, I just saw that too. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so I'm sitting there going, uh, yeah, we're supposed to give this about. And Audra goes, yeah, I saw that in the clouds. And I'm like, yeah. oh, of course you did. <laughs> and so we uh, continue and worship for a little bit. And then we just both sit down in awe of what the Lord just spoke to us, knowing what this was going to mean knowing that, that uh, literally our bank account was going in the red. And so we sit down together, we pull up the text to give, and we type in the number. And it's like that, that time when you're sending a text to somebody for the first time mm -hmm. saying, okay, here it goes. But we, were, we typed in the number and we pressed send and we, and we just said, all right, Lord, this is all in your hands. We trust you, we honor you, we worship you. So fast forward, we go ne the next week. Uh, sure enough, our bank account goes in the red, uh, but we knew that God was faithful. We knew that he was trustworthy. And we knew what he shared and he, and he confirmed in both of us. About two weeks after Heart for Mercy, my mom uh, and my stepdad come in town and we're sitting in our living room and my mom comes in, into the living room and, and, and sets this piece of paper on my chest and I'm like, oh, okay, what is this? And so I open up this envelope mm -hmm. and I'm looking and it's this check and I'm looking at the number <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness, like, what is this? And she goes, oh, this is the inheritance from yeah. your uncle. Well, the number happened to be six, almost six times the amount that we gave. Mm -hmm. And we were totally overwhelmed. In that moment, we went back to Heart for Mercy and what happened that night. And for me, like the, the financial blessing was incredible, but to be able to give, give that kind of money and not panic and really actually trust God was so huge for just our family because I thrived on security and knowing that we were gonna be okay. And so being able to really put up my trust in God and say yes to the Lord, even though I didn't understand it was like the hugest blessing for my heart because it released me of this grip of security and money and security and things uh, that are fading away. And so now we're here at this, this second Heart for Mercy and um, we're already praying and believing God and not looking at what we have to give, but what He's gonna ask us to give. Yeah. Knowing that He's trustworthy, knowing that He's faithful. And so we wanna encourage you in the, same, in the same vein that the Lord is faithful, He is trustworthy, and He will provide in ways mm -hmm. that you totally can't imagine. Hey, Mercy Culture Church, Landon here. Hey, all of the elders are away for our annual elders retreat. And we're praying for the community of Mercy Culture Church. Every single member, we're covering you with prayer. And uh, we love your families so very much. And we are seeking the Lord on His heart for His house. What's on His heart, what's on His mind for this house. And I'm excited to share with you in the near future what God speaks to us this weekend. But I'm so excited that I have a dear friend of mine and a mentor of mine, Pastor Mondo Davis, who is the pastor of Gateway North Fort Worth campus where I got to do my year internship when we were with Gateway. And for those of you that don't know, Gateway Church actually launched Mercy Culture Church. They planted Mercy Culture Church. And part of it was this amazing relationship that I got to build with Pastor Mondo and Lisa Davis. And I'm telling you, these are some of the the most amazing people I've ever met in my entire life. Pastor Mondo might be the greatest leader I've ever met, and I cannot even describe how much I learned from him in the year at Gateway North Fort Worth that I got to spend. Pastor Mondo, in that year, not only was a mentor, but an amazing friend, and he's spoken to me, he heard God for me, and he's ministered personally to me countless times on a personal basis, and uh, it is a joy and it is an honor to have Pastor Mondo and Lisa Davis with us at Mercy Culture Church. So you know how we do here. Would you stand your feet all over this place? Would we give honor to where honor is due? Can we welcome my friend, Pastor Mondo Davis?
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Pastor Landon, you're about to make me cry. I'm supposed to be preaching here. <laughs> Praise God. Can we just give honor where honor is due to the Lord because he is here in this house? God is so good. He's so faithful. And he honors you. And I just want to take a moment to honor one of the most incredible men that I've ever met. Your senior pastor, Pastor Landon Schott, and his lovely wife, Heather, they're an amazing family. Can we give God praise for such amazing leaders? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I got a phone call from my oversight at Gateway Church, and he said, hey, there's a young leader who's going to come to the city of Fort Worth and plant a church in about a year, and I'm calling you first to see if they could be housed at the North Fort Worth campus. Um, he's going to have a significant impact in the city of Fort Worth. What do you think? In fact, before you answer, I want you to know that you and him are going to be best friends by the time this is all over. He meets with the team. We fell in love with Pastor Landon and Pastor Heather. And a year later, he is one of the most dynamic men pursuing the heart of God that I've ever witnessed in person. Would you agree with that? He's an absolutely incredible leader. In fact, I've never met a person who did a full 40-day fast until I met Pastor Landon Schott. And he pursues God's heart, not only for he and his family, but for you and for Mercy Culture Church. Are you guys grateful for that? Those watching online, are you grateful? Let's just give God praise for an amazing man of God and amazing family. And Pastor Landon, I just want to say at the Elders Retreat, we're praying for you. In fact, I heard today's a very special day. And guess what? We're your spiritual family, so we get the privilege of singing you happy birthday. Are y'all ready? The old traditional style. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Landon. Happy birthday to you. Woo! <laughs> Praise God. Happy birthday. I will tell you this. Oh, drop my water. Just look at that like the anointing, y'all. It's about to spill all over this house. Are y'all ready? Come on. Woo! You ready to get splashed with this anointing? Mm. If you're watching online, we want to say welcome. We are so honored that you would spend your morning worshiping with us. We believe that God's going to touch you right where you are, whether in your living room, you're in a car. We just want God to touch you right where you are. So just prepare your heart to receive. Also, I want to take a moment to honor the most amazing woman in my life the most beautiful woman in the planet in my world, my Shiro, my lovely wife, Lisa Davis. She's sitting right here. Can we just give honor and honors due? Go ahead and wave to everybody, sweetheart. So yes, I know it's not proper grammar, but I did say she is my Shiro because she had eight of my children and number nine is on the way. Any woman doing that is my Shiro. Come on. I love you, honey. <laughs> Now, no matter where you are, if you serve, this is Memorial Day weekend, so if you had the opportunity and the privilege to serve in our armed forces, we want to take a moment to recognize you. So even online, uh, if you're watching and you've served, we want to take this moment to honor you as well. Would you just stand to your feet for just a moment? We don't want to embarrass you. We want to take a moment to honor you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Can we just give honor? Thank you. That's right. Come on, Mercy Culture. That's right. Yes. Woo! Come on. Just stay standing for just a moment. My father served in the military for 20 years. We don't want to embarrass you. Just stand for just a moment. And he served for uh, 20 years, and we had the privilege of traveling the world and you know, being provided for because my father, along uh, the lines of all of you who have served as well and those who have lost their lives protecting our country, uh, have stepped out and been courageous and really demonstrated the heart of Christ and being willing to lay down their lives so that we could live. So thank you for fighting for our freedom and thank you for helping us to preserve the freedom we so enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as we prepare to jump in, I want you to know that if you would like to access the notes, you can text the number on the screen. 
and those notes will show up for you. You can follow along with the message there online as well. You can access the notes. And I just want to ask this question before we jump in. Uh, have any of you, through this process of the quarantine and COVID-19 and sheltering in place and everything that's been happening, asked these questions? God, what does this mean for my family? If you have, just raise your hand. They're at home as well. Just go ahead, lift your hand up. What does this mean for my family? What does this mean for my job? What does this mean for our, our income? What does this mean for the future of our nation? God, what are you saying to us? What am I supposed to be doing while I'm sheltering in place and homeschooling these kids and I'm about to kill somebody because I don't know what to do? <laughs> have any of you asked those questions? If you've asked those questions, I want you to know that I believe God has an answer for you. Y'all ready for that today? I believe he wants to minister to you as we transition out of this season. So I want to read something to you in regard to where we are right now. And I just want you to take a moment to think about this and how it pertains to you and your family right where we are right now. The Latin root word for quarantine is 40. So what does the Bible say about 40? The flood lasted 40 days. Think about this for a moment. Right now, we can reflect on history to learn about our future. There was a time when the earth was flooded and Noah found himself with his family being preserved by the Lord. And after the flood dissipated, new life began to spring forth. Right now, we have been flooded all throughout the entire earth with fear and anxiety and worry about our future. And the things that died off during the flood with Noah caused everything to come forth with new life after it dissipated. Think about the things that God called for us to die off during this time of quarantine. Our idols, the, the spending time at the bars, the, the sports games, all the things that we can so easily idolize, you and I both. God said, I'm killing it off. I want my people back. I want your undivided attention. What I have for you is too important. Keep your eyes on me. Let go of the distractions and watch what I'll do in you and through you that can change the world. Anybody believe that today? Yeah. So look, the flood lasts for 40 days. Give God praise. That's right, we can praise him. He's good. Yeah. Y'all can talk to me. Come on, family. Yes. You can, online, yes. In the living room, yes. You can talk to me. Clap your hands, though, ye people. <laughs> Come on. 40 years, Moses fled in Egypt, 40 days, Moses stayed on Mount Sinai to receive the commandments. The exodus lasted 40 years. Jesus fasted 40 days in the wilderness, 40 days where it takes for a woman to rest after giving birth. I don't, I don't follow that rule sometimes. I don't know. I'm guilty. <laughs> guilty as <is> charged. <laughs> My wife is like, you better stop. <laughs> <laughs> the optimum number of weeks for human gestation is 40. A group of theologians thinks the number 40 represents change. Everybody say change. How many know it's time for change? God wants to use you. It's the time for preparing a person or a people to make a fundamental change. Something will happen after these 40 days. See, May 23rd, or March 23rd, excuse me, is when the lockdown happened. It ended May 1st. That's exactly 40 days. Exactly 40 days. See, the air is becoming cleaner. The rivers are cleaning up. The pollution has dissipated. There's less theft. There's less murder. There's less distraction. Healing is happening not only around the world, but in our hearts. Most importantly, people are turning to Christ. Yeah. It's a dark world, and God has called for people to see the light. Guess who he wants to use to show them the light? Turn to your neighbor and say, yeah, he's talking about you. Talking about you. They're online. Go ahead and look to the left and the right. Say, yep, he's talking about you. You're the light. Remember, we're in the year 2020. We heard the cliche at the beginning of the year, the year of perfect vision, the, the year of clear vision. 20 plus 20 equals 40. 2020 is the year of the, of the United States census. Jesus Christ, the savior of our world, was born during a census. Come on, y'all. Come on now. Come on. It's better than you're giving credit for. Come on. Somebody praise him. He is speaking. May these days of quarantine bring spiritual liberation to our souls, our nation and ultimately all around the world. Amen? When you think about that, guess what? God wants to use you and your family as his billboard to point people back to him. You believe that today? I'm gonna show you how. Because he has a purpose. He's put something inside of you that's gonna draw people to him. In fact, so much so that he wants to use you as a billboard. You like, huh? What, pastor? Me? Yep. You. <laughs> Talking about you. 
Think about this. Companies spend millions of dollars to get clarity on their purpose. And then they spend more millions to create ads and billboards so that when you have a problem, you can see their billboard as a solution that would draw you to their product. God spent the most expensive thing that he ever had. The blood of his precious son, Jesus Christ. So that when the world looked through the darkness and they could not seem to find the light, they would see a billboard that would point them to the savior of the world. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, and the God of all gods. And guess who the billboard is? You. That's right. You. <laughs> so the title of this message today is Discovering God's Purpose for Your Family. If you're taking notes, if you want to pull that up in the notes app, you can write that down. I want to show you an example of a family in the Bible that God used in this capacity. It's called the Rechabite family. Everybody say Rechabites. Say it again, Rechabites. It just sounds good, Rechabites. Jeremiah chapter 35, starting at verse 5. I'm going to read in just a moment, but I want to give you the backdrop, a little context to understand what led to this moment. So the prophet Jeremiah is in a position where God is speaking to him. And he says, hey, I want you to go visit the Rechabite family. And when you go visit the Rechabite family, I want you to go into their home. Hey, guys. Hey, Rechabites, how you guys doing? And then I want you to take pitchers of wine. And I want you to put it all in front of them. And then I want you to say, hey, Rechabite family, go ahead, partake. Turn up. Go ahead, take a sip, man. Drink that up, man. It's good stuff. So he's like, okay, all right. So now imagine he goes in, okay, brings the wine before him, gather the family, yep, come on, dad, mom, auntie, uncle, nephews, nieces, everybody come, sit down. Okay, here's the wine. And God says, when you put the wine before them, I'm going to give you a word for the family, depending on what they do. Okay? You guys got it? Y'all tracking with me? Everybody say, yeah. yeah. Come on, you can do better now. Let me say, yeah. Yeah. All right, so here it is, verse 5, Jeremiah chapter 35. Then I set before the men of the house of the Rechabites pitchers full of wine and cups, and I said to them, drink wine. Go ahead, guys, turn up, right? But they said, oh, we will not drink wine for Jonadab, the son of Rechab. Okay, let's pause right there. Rechab is the grandfather here. Jonadab is the dad. Hence, the word Rechabites comes from Rechab, okay? So God saw fit to name this entire family, this lineage, the genealogy, after Rechab. Why? Because of what he does. Our father commanded us, okay? You shall not drink wine, neither you nor your sons forever, nor shall you build a house or sow seed or plant a vineyard or own one. But you shall live in tents all your days, that you may live many days in the land where you are sojourners, we have obeyed the words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he commanded us in all our days. We have never drunk wine, nor have wives, our sons, or our daughters, nor have we built ourselves houses to live in, nor do we have vineyards or fields or seed. We've lived only in tents and have obeyed. Everybody say obey. obey. And done everything. Everybody say everything. everything. According to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against the land, we said, come and let us go. Everybody say go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of Chaldeans who rule Babylon and for fear of the army of the Armenians. So we have lived in Jerusalem. Okay, so we're going to continue in just a moment. But what happens here? He put the wine before him. They respond, uh -uh, no, sorry, don't want the wine. Appreciate you, but not happening. Here's why. Because our grandfather, Rechab, communicated to our father, Jonadab, and Jonadab said, hey, don't plant seed, don't build a vineyard, don't buy a house, and don't get attached to these things. Come on now. Are there some things that God may have spoken to you in this time through a grandfather, grandmother, a parent, you as the parent, where he's saying, hey, here, here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to focus on this. In this time, in this season around our world, everybody else can do it. But here's what I want you to do as my ecclesia, my chosen people, my church. I want you to focus on this. Anybody, anybody heard from God in that manner? Yeah? Why? Here's why. 
Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 18. Then Jeremiah said to the house of the Rechabites, God spoke to Jeremiah, okay? I'm pausing now. God spoke to Jeremiah, and now God has given him a word for the family, and here's the word that he's delivering for the Rechabite family. He said to the house of the Rechabite, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because you have obeyed the command of Jonadab, your father. I don't know why his accent is like that, but it just sounds good. It just feels good. We're just going to go with it. And have kept all his commands and have done according to all that he commanded you. It sounds more official, right? <laughs> Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall never fail to have a man, a descendant, to stand before me always. Anybody want that kind of word from God about you and your family? What happened? They identified their purpose. Rechab heard from God. He had a corporate encounter that turned into a daily encounter. And then he heard, believed, and obeyed and communicated to his son, Jonadab. And Jonadab said, hey, guys, here's what we're going to do. If you read through the text, it's over 200 years that have obeyed this command because one man chose to have a corporate encounter that went to a daily encounter and chose to hear God, believe him, and obey him, and it transformed the entire community. God wants to use you to do the same thing as his billboard, church. Come on now. So what happens? How, how is this so significant? God needed them to be mobile. Here's what happened. When they were attacked by King Nebuchadnezzar, he would come and raid an entire community. He would take out a whole village, a tribe. And God's saying, I don't need you attached to the things of this world because when the enemy comes, I need you to be in a position to hear me, believe me, and obey me. And I'm going to preserve your generation. I'm going to preserve your people, your descendants, so that you will shine the light of Jesus Christ to the entire world and people can find you in the midst of the darkness. That's God's word for you today, Mercy Culture. That's God's word for you if you're watching online. He wants to preserve you no matter where you are. And all it takes is a moment to hear God, believe him, and obey. Amen? Anybody tracking with me? So when we think about this and we think about the significance of it, it all comes down to being able to understand the purpose in which God placed you on the earth. That's it. You might be asking, all right, pastor, that sounds real good. How many here have a written pur purpose statement right now for your family or you? If you do, just raise your hand. There's no condemnation if you don't. That's why I'm here today. I'm here to help you. So I want you to raise your hand boldly. If you have one, if you don't, it's okay. Okay, put your hands down. If you don't have a purpose statement, if you don't understand why I'm here, it's the number one question. It's the number one question around the world. Why am I here? If you're asking that question right now, raise your hand. It's okay. Raise your hand. Why am I here? They're online. Raise your hand. I believe God wants to show you. And when he does, if you receive it, it'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. You believe that? It's the truth. Why? Because the spirit of God lives on the inside of you. And he put something so significant inside of you that it can change the world. It really can. So for me and my family, God began this journey with us through a process of uh, confusion, so to speak. Uh, you, you don't get nine kids on accident. So my wife and I, we do a daily, weekly, excuse me, weekly date night. I prefer it to be daily sometimes. But... We enjoy uh, that once a week outing where her and I just have time with ourselves and no kids. We love our children, but as you know, I love my wife more. <laughs> and with that, we were sitting in the parking lot, beautiful date, had an amazing time together. We're sitting right outside the house in the car. I mean, everything was perfect. I'm thinking we're getting ready to go inside. You know, we're just going to settle down for the evening. And she hits me with this question kind of sideways. And I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, babe, like right now, that's, you know, it's like, hey, you, you, somebody, hey man, you got, you got two minutes? And then they hit you with that question. It's like, bro, for real, two minutes? It's going to take us two hours to process that. Seriously, two minutes? It was one of those moments. So she's like, hey, babe, you know, I know everything was great tonight, but I just want to ask a, a quick question. What's our purpose? Why did God bring us together, you know, to be married, you know, as a family, you know? What's our purpose? And, I, and I'm feeling like I understand the question. And I'm trying to answer it, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm bombing this thing, guys. I'm dropping the ball. The more I try to explain it, the worse it gets. It's just like, let me put the shovel down the... Stop digging this hole, and let's just go to the Lord. So we go to the Lord, and God reminds me of a vision that he showed me about our family when we first got married. I was sitting down at the kitchen table, and I was praying, and God showed me Psalm 127, verses 1 through 2. I don't have the scripture up, but that's Psalm 127 if you want to read it. And, and part of it says, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. 
And as I was reading this scripture, I had this open vision of this family in a field. And I saw a husband, wife, uh, like, like three or four kids, maybe five on this side, three or four, five on this side. And they were overwhelmed and enveloped with the presence of God. And it was so strong that it brought me to tears. And I saw the love that they had for the Lord and the love they had for one another. And it was this overflow effect. And I was thinking to myself, God, man, who is that? Who is that family? I need to know them. And God said, son, you really want to know who that is? I said, yeah. He said, that's your family. That's your family. And I want to show you guys a picture of my crew, if we have that, and we can put it up on the screen. But when he showed me this, it blew my mind. <laughs> and you can leave that up for a moment because... I came in the room right after I had this vision. I'm like, babe, we're going to have a big family. It's going to be amazing. God just spoke to me. She looked at me. We were just married. She said, baby, listen, I don't know who you think is going to have all of those children, but it is not going to be me. Okay. You're lucky if you get one or two, bruh. You're lucky if you get one or two. Here we go right here. Can we just give God praise? He is good. <laughs> So God, he began to make the process clear for us. Hey, I'm going to give you a large family, but there's some specific things I want you guys to do. And with that, he gave us a family vision statement, which is to glorify God with a passionate, purpose-filled life and inspire others to do the same. That is what we were born to do. And we want to help you tap into what God has called you and your family to do. So three points today. The first is ask. If you are asking that question right now, God, how do we find that for ourselves? How do we find our purpose? Point number one is very simple, ask. Everybody say ask. ask. Matthew chapter seven, verse seven, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. The mistake we make many times is we're asking outside of God's will and we're wondering why it hasn't come to pass. So what have you been asking God for outside of scripture? Hmm. Got a little quiet in this Presbyterian church. What, and I'm, I'm guilty too, what have we been asking for that we're standing on Scripture about? Because God is bound by his own word, and if he's made the promise to you, we have to stand on his promise to see it to come to pass. So I want to share a quick story about a man, because you may be thinking, oh, I don't know if we can get this, you know, this seems such, like such an insurmountable task to try to get this, you know, ambiguous vision for me and my family. How do we do that? Well, I want you to know today, I believe God wants to begin the process with you. There's a story about a guy who was drowning in the ocean. A boat comes by and they're like, hey, you know, you need, a, you need some help. We can give you a life raft. He's like, no, no, God's going to save me. I'll be fine. Thank you. Okay. Next thing you know, cruise ship comes by. Hey, we can help you. Please grab the life raft. I'm going to be fine. The Lord is going to save me. Thank you. Right? <laughs> Next, Coast Guard in the helicopter. Sir, please grab the life raft. We're going to help you. I'm going to be fine. My God is going to save me. He drowns, goes to heaven. God, what's up? I thought you were going to save me. I was trusting you. I had faith. God is like, bro, I sent three different people to save you. Come on. Hello. <laughs> I'm here today. God is going to do it. But guess what? I have the privilege and honor of being here with you to extend a lifeline. My question is, are you going to grab a hold of it? Are you going to grab a hold today? God wants to touch you in a special way. So think about this. If you're like, ah, I don't know, Pastor, sounds good, but we just want to kind of live life. You know, we just want to go to work, come home, American dream, pick a fence, two and a half kids, dog, good to go. That's great. That's great. If you want what God has for you? Uh -huh. The American dream pales in comparison. I'm trying to tell you something here. Think about this. God doesn't create anything without purpose. Adam and Eve, it was the first attack on marriage because the very first institution ever created in the history of the world was the family. Think about it. It was instituted before religion, before government, a marriage, the family the very first institution ever. And God created it with tremendous purpose. God outlines Adam and Eve's purpose right here in Genesis chapter one, verses 26 through 28. 
Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Everybody say, in our image. That's what the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son said. They will reign, everybody say reign, over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. Squirrel. <laughs> so God created human beings in his own image. Look to your neighbor to your left and your right and say, man, you look good. Now, if you're single, don't go too far, okay? Hold on. I saw somebody say, like, snuggle up a little bit, like, yeah, uh-uh, mm-mm. Hold on now, hold on. They're online at home. You look good. Why? Say, you look like God. Because you're his son or you're his daughter. Amen? In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Now, y'all already know how I apply this scripture, okay? I'm like, baby, listen, the Bible says, um, but it doesn't always refer to just that. It's talking about the very thing, the seed that God has placed inside of you in the form of purpose that he wants to bring forth to bless the world so that people can eat of the fruit of what God has put inside of you. Right. Amen? Right. So Adam and Eve, fill the earth, govern it, reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. He's called them to rule and reign, not over people, but over the enemy, so that we could be the ecclesia, the chosen people of God, his church, and we could see the spirit of God move in a powerful way throughout the entire earth. Number two example, Joseph and Mary. Purpose was to get married to bring forth the savior of the world through the power of the Holy Spirit with a miraculous conception. In Luke chapter one, verse 35, the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That literally means to hover. And when you think about uh, a bird hovering over its nest, it's in a position where it's literally protecting the young from any enemies that come, any predators that may try to come. It's feeding the little birdies and it's saying, hey, I'm the one watching over this nest. If you want to get to it, you got to go through me. And God, in the form of the Holy Spirit, is hovering in this house over all of us, his sons and daughters. And he's saying that I'm going to miraculously place something inside of you, and I'm going to protect you from any enemies. I'm going to protect you from any predators, but I'm going to feed you everything you need to grow and flourish, spread your wings, and fly. <laughs> Let me say it like this. You cannot come into the presence of a holy God intimately and not walk away pregnant. In a marriage, when my wife and I, when you and your spouse come to the most intimate place in that beautiful relationship that God designed, inception takes place. And there's produce. There's a child. There's something birthed over the course of time. When you come into an intimate relationship with God, just like he did with Mary, he places something inside of you so that you conceive his purpose and you birth it into the earth so that the world can experience the joy of what he's placed on the inside of you so that people see him when they look at you. Amen? Abraham and Sarah, they established a blessed nation under God's new covenant in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. God has a vision for you so big that's going to glorify God and blow your mind. The question is, do you receive it today? Come on, y'all. You can do better than that. Do you receive it today? Do you really receive it? They're online. Do you receive it? Amen. So how do you get God's purpose for your family? I said it earlier. Pastor Landon says it every single time he steps in the pulpit, corporate encounters to daily encounters. In those daily encounters... We have a choice to make. Are we going to hear, believe, and obey? And if we hear, believe, and obey God, then he pours out his blessing. And that's where we experience the fullness of what he has. Amen? Amen. So here's, here's where we are. I want to show you guys just a couple of pictures. I don't know if we have these for our family. But as a result of hearing, believing, and obeying, you're going to find that God gives you vision. He gives you a mission. He'll give you core values for your family. So much so that he'll even take it down and give you a, a clarified family slogan. Yeah. Ours is life. We want to have a life invested for eternity. If you ask any one of our children, hey, what's your family vision statement? They'll tell you it's to glorify God with a passionate, purpose-filled life. They'll rattle it off. 
all the way down. So God wants to do the same thing for you. And I don't know if we have those photos. It's okay if we don't. But mission statements, core values, he wants to provide all of that for you. And you may be thinking, man, it's such an insurmountable task. How, where do we start? What do we do? I want you to know that the power of the Holy Spirit is here. And he wants to, here we go. This is, this is just a few examples. This is our mission statements as a family. You can go to the next one with the uh, vision statements if you have that. We have the core values. We'll just put those up and let those scroll through. And as we're doing that, I want you to know that if you're thinking about it and you're asking the question right now, I don't know where to start. You've been learning about the one who can help you for the last few weeks. Pastor Landon and Pastor Heather have been teaching on the power of the Holy Spirit, doing a phenomenal job with that. Amen? Would you agree? Yeah. And he is the one who's going to help you. And I'm just going to highlight one component of what the Holy Spirit does and we will recognize the significance of that in just a moment. But before we do, I want you to know, before we get into that, that the purpose that God's placed on your life is so significant. What I'm about to share with you is going to put things in perspective. If you don't think you have purpose, if you're like, I don't know, it's too big of a task, I want you to think about a cockroach for a minute. Yes, I said it, a cockroach, a nasty pest that we all can't stand. Cockroaches have purpose. Guess who gave it to them? God. So when you see one, Guess what the purpose of that moment is? Yep, kill it. <laughs> but the reason why that bad boy showed up is because God's reminding us, hey, bro, you need to clean up the house. Time to clean up. <laughs> On a more serious note, they're decomposers. And although they've survived everything that our world has experienced, without a cockroach, they wouldn't decompose things that allow the soil to be fertilized, to turn into compost, to bring forth flowers and grass and trees so that we can enjoy the fruit of those trees. Can you believe that? God put that kind of purpose in the cockroach, man. Seriously, God. Wow. Think about flowers for a moment. Flowers are created with a specific color, shape, scent to attract certain types of birds and insects that can help pollinate and further facilitate our ecosystem. If God is going to put that level of attention to detail in a cockroach, grass, flowers, how much more is he going to put on the inside of you and you were made to look just like him as his son or his daughter? Don't let the enemy lie to you and tell you that you don't have a purpose, that you don't know what it is. If you don't know, it's okay. God's going to deposit that today. Anybody ready for that? Online, you received that? It's the truth. We serve a good God. He is with us. And he's like, no, that's my son. That's my daughter. That's my family. So that leads me right into point number two. Number one was asked. Number two is seek. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Say it again. Many times you hear that scripture and that, that second word is left out. It's really important. And righteousness is not out of our own strength or ability. It is all about repenting and turning to God and then recognizing that we're nothing without him. The word literally means in right standing with God. So think about that. And all of these things will be added to you. So, so how do we do that? We first ask, then we seek. And as we seek first his kingdom, it boils down to this, priorities. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 and 6, he breaks this down in terms of how we are to prioritize our lives. He's talking to the church of Ephesus and he says, first is your relationship with the Lord, one-on-one. -on -one. Number two, if you're married, is your spouse. Number three is your children. Number four is your work, and number five is your calling. And if you're lucky, you've never worked a day in your life because you found your calling in your work. Here's the issue. In the world that we live in, there's tremendous pressure for the things at the bottom of the list to climb up to the top. And the things at the top to get pushed down to the bottom. When we prioritize God's priorities, he takes care of us, and he takes care of the things on the bottom of the list, amen? amen. So I love what Stephen Covey said to illustrate this. The most important thing is to keep the most important thing, the most important thing. Brilliant in its simplicity. I love it. So when it comes down to prioritizing, there's two types of families, okay? So I want you to picture me standing here with my tribe, okay? Me and my wife are holding hands with all nine of our children. It's a real big circle, okay? And we're all looking into the circle and looking up at the Lord. So we're prioritizing God, and we are relying on one another. 
And everything that we need is being provided in this sphere of family, okay? That is a picture of what's called an interdependent family. Now, conversely, I want you to imagine another family standing right here. But instead of standing and holding hands facing inward, they're all facing outward. Some are holding hands, others aren't. Some are walking away. Others are walking in different directions. There's pain, there's opposition, there's a fence. That's called an independent family. What's the difference? The difference is we have one family who's getting their need met within the family unit and by the Lord. And the other family is an example of a family who's not getting those needs met within the family unit. What is the byproduct? The byproduct is this is a family that understands purpose. This is a family that's pursuing the Lord. This is the purpose uh, of the family going in one direction. The end result over here is the children are saying, mm, can't get my knees met there. I should just go join a gang. Yeah, might as well go and fornicate with him because he's the only one that shows me any attention. Eh, yep, she smiled at me at the bar, so it'd be nice to take her home. At least she smiles at me. Can't remember last time my wife smiled at me. Or, mm, man, he comes home, he, he just plays video games. Doesn't see that I need help with the kids and changing diapers. Might as well just go and I'll be better off by myself. Yeah, we've all seen and heard these tragic stories. Some of us have experienced them ourselves, including me. But God says, hey, I want you to recognize, I want you to be an interdependent family. And when you trust me, despite what you've gone through, despite the pain you're going through right now, I can show you the way. If you reach out and grab a hold of this life, life raft that I'm sending to you, I'll show you the way. Amen? Amen. So I want to read through these really quick here. And this is really an indicator for uh, the breakdown of the family. And as we look at this, I want you to see the significance of this. This is from a Harvard sociologist, Carl Zimmerman. And this was documented as a reality in 1947. And these are the eight traits called the eight symptoms of an atomistic age. In other words, if you have a society that's thriving, here are eight symptoms of that society that will cause it to implode. In other words, the bomb is going to go off and that society will fail. This happened with the Babylonians. It happened with some of the greatest Thank you for being with us today. The Romans we want to hear what God age. is doing in and your I'm life. Read through these so feel free to share on here. social media. And Number one, marriage so loses For more its information and to stay connected, as follow us on social media or divorce. visit mercyculture.com. Number two, the traditional meaning of marriage is lost. Number three, the feminist movement abounds and there's a loss of value for the family. There's an increased public disrespect for parents. There's an increase in juvenile delinquency, promiscuity, and rebellion. The hospitality of pseudo-intellectuals to the traditional family soon spreads to common people, sealing the doom for the society. There's an increased acceptance of adultery. And last but not least, there's a tolerance for sexual perversions of all kinds, which puts the nail in the coffin. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Yeah, about the last 50 years we've been plagued by that, not only here in the United States, but all around the world. So how do you discover God's purpose for your family and fulfill it as an interdependent family? It leads to my last point, number three, knock. Psalm 37, four, take delight. That word literally means to find pleasure in, to find joy in the Lord, and he will give you the desire of your heart. If you haven't gotten it yet, my question is, are your desires aligned with God's desires? Many times we're like, God, I'm asking for this, but I haven't gotten it. As we come into contact with God and develop an intimate relationship with him, our desires begin to change and become his desires for us. Amen? So for me, I grew up, uh, lived an immoral life, uh, sinful life. At the age of 16 years old, realized my desperate need for a savior. And uh, after getting saved, I was so excited about my salvation. I said, God, I want to give a gift back to you. At the time, being 16, I thought my best gift was my athletic ability and my ability to play football. So I said, God, I want to go to the NFL. I want to stand on the platform after winning a Super Bowl and tell the entire nation about how good you are because of how good you've been to me. So that was a dream that lived in my heart as a 16 year old kid. Fast forward 10 years of sweat, blood and tears and I found myself running down the field against the Minnesota Vikings and I hit what's called the wedge. It's three of the nastiest, ugliest, meanest, strongest looking people you've ever seen in your life that create what's called a wall and they're running full speed at you and if you're the first one down the field, it's your job to hit them like a crazy man. 
So yours truly was responsible to do that because I was the first one down the field. And after I hit the wedge, everything went black. I found my knee was swelling. It felt like a tree trunk. I was like, what is happening? I tried to run on it. I couldn't. It felt like a wet noodle. They called me off the field and said, uh, Mondo, we need to do a test on your leg. They tested it. They said, we have good news and bad news. Which one do you want first? I said, give me the bad news. Bad news is you tore your ACL. You're done for the season. It's over. The good news is we still want you to be a New York Jet. In that moment, the enemy whispered in my ear and said, Mondo, that NFL dream you had, it means not for long. You're done. God said, no, son. <laughs> NFL for you means new found life. And now you're about to step into your true des destiny as a pastor. That's what you were born to do. So no matter where you are, no matter how hard things are, even right now in this moment, I want you to know God still has purpose for you. And even when the enemy tries to lie, he will turn it and show you the power of what he's put on the inside of you. Now, there's seven purposes of the Holy Spirit to help us fulfill that. I'm going to go through these pretty quick. This is in John chapter 14, 16. And it says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and stand by that he may remain with you forever. And if you're asking, how do we start? What do we do? He's going to be your strengthener. My question is, how has he already strengthened you? He's done more than we give him credit for. He's going to be your standby. When did God stand by you when you felt alone? Think about it. He's been there. He's your helper. When did you ask for help and see him provide? He's your intercessor. How have you been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit or have you? Come on now. He's your advocate. When did someone else step up to advocate for you even when you didn't have to? He's your comforter. When were you grieving and how did he comfort you? He's your counselor. When did you ask for wisdom and saw him provide it for you? See, th this is a season where God wants to turn a tragedy into a triumph. I'm going to share a short story with, with you about a family that experienced triumph during the Depression, the Great Depression in the 1920s. It started with a man by the name of Frank who, as a kid, had a severe ailment physically that did not allow him to go out and play with the other kids. So he would stay inside, he would go inside, and he would cook with his mom in the kitchen. Mom would show him the ropes, and next thing you know, he found a knack for making candy in the kitchen with his mom. Now, fast forward, he's continuing to cultivate this purpose. He's feeling called to this. And now he's in a season where he's about to get married. He marries a woman by the name of Ethel. He and Ethel found their purpose together, and in the midst of calamity around our entire nation during the 1920s and the Great Depression, he and Ethel made a little invention in their kitchen, something that seems insignificant, but they found purpose. They had a racehorse by the name of Snickers, and they named their new invention, their new candy bar, after their racehorse. True story. They found purpose in the midst of what seemed like a sour situation and provided something sweet for the whole world to enjoy. Amen? True story. God wants to do something like that with you. The question is, do you receive it? So... All three of those points boil down to one thing. If you don't remember anything else I said, I just want you to remember this. The first point was what? Y'all say it out loud? Ask. The second point was seek. The third point was what? Knock. Put those three together and you create an acronym, A-S-K. If you don't know what else to do, simply ask. And the Holy Spirit wants to give you the wisdom you need. So I'd like you to stand up right now as we begin to close. Everybody stand up on your feet. And I want to... I want to walk you through an exercise in our last few moments here. And if you're asking that question, today wasn't designed to give you the mission statement, vision statement, core values, and all of that. This is just the beginning of the process. The Holy Spirit is going to walk you through that. But as an individual today, whether you're single or married, divorced, it doesn't matter. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to deposit something. He wants to hover in this atmosphere and deposit something inside of you that's going to begin the process. And you're going to be pregnant with purpose moving forward, and he's going to bring you more clarity as you go through that process. Amen? So I'm going to ask you five questions. We're going to go through it quickly. It's designed to be quick. It's not designed to give you analysis paralysis, so just flow with me, okay? And as we go through these, again, I'm going to move pretty quick. This will begin the conversation with you and your spouse if you're married. If you're single, it's going to begin the conversation with you and the Holy Spirit. And if you're married, you want to take it to the Holy Spirit as well. Amen? Everybody ready? All right, so you're going to shout out an answer to these five questions as loud as you can. Okay? And I want you to say it with passion like you believe God is going to do something special in you. You guys ready for that? All right, I'm going to go over the questions really quick, and then we're going to do it out loud where you're going to respond to me, okay? They're online. You can go through this as well. The first question is, who are you? 
It's your last name. It's not that complicated, okay? You just, I'm a Davis, Pastor Landon, a shot. Okay, it's that simple, okay? What do you do? Okay, think about it like this. This is the thing you do the very best with the least amount of effort. It's that simple. People always tell you how amazing you are, but you don't believe it because it comes so natural. Number three, who do you do it for? In other words, who do you feel called to? I feel called to single parents. I feel called to the homeless. I feel called to children. I feel called to athletes, whatever it is. What do those people want and need? The homeless need food and shelter. Those without jobs, they need clarity on what kind of jobs they can get. The uh, single parents need support. Last question, how do they change as a result? We take homeless people off the street and we empower them to find their purpose and provide for their families. We help children find out what they were born to do. Whatever it is, this is how they change as a result. All right, y'all ready? All right, so now you're gonna say them out loud. I'm gonna read the question. You're gonna shout out the answer as loud as you can. And then when you leave, you're gonna process that with the Holy Spirit and with your spouse or your family and you're gonna to begin to document it and God's gonna to begin to help you with this process. All right, you ready? Who are you? What do you do? Come on, this is good. You do it at home as well, come on now. Who do you do it for? What do those people want and need? Oh, don't fade on me now. Somebody's scratching their head like, oh Jesus, help me, help me, come on. Hang in there with me. How do they change as a result? <laughs> Somebody said Holy Spirit. That was good. Now, he does. He does everything, right? Yeah, oversaved, oversaved. <laughs> All right, so as we close, I want you to go ahead and close your eyes right now. Stay standing for me. That was just the beginning of the process. Those questions are in the notes. You can go back over those, process it. But here's what I want to do. As we close, I want to just share this story with you. There's a story, this is a true story about a man by the name of Ali Hafed. Ali Hafed was a man who had everything. He, he, he had a conversation with the man of God and he had a beautiful family. He had children, the business, farms, everything you could think of. He had the American dream. He has a conversation with a, a man of God and he talked to him about the value of diamonds. And he said, if you had just one diamond, you could have not one farm, but many farms. The key to Ali Hafez's success in his life was his contentment. And when he learned about the value of the diamond, he found himself discontent. He sold everything he had and began to travel the world looking for diamonds. Three years later, after losing everything and being broke, down to rags, depressed, empty, he found a beach, walked into the water, never to return, self-inflicted, suicide. True story. The family who purchased his home after he passed away. They were out in the back and looked through a stream and saw a glitter. And as they picked up what they thought were rocks and got them examined, they found that they were diamonds. But not just a few, there were acres of diamonds in the backyard of Ali Hafed's house. But yet he traveled the entire world trying to find it. And I want you to know that today, you may be thinking, man, he just talked to me about the value of purpose. <laughs> I don't know where to start or what to do. I want you to know that God has planted it right on the inside of your heart. It's in your backyard. All you gotta do is take out your shovel and allow the Holy Spirit to show you the beauty of what's already inside of you. So no matter where you are, if you receive that message today and you want God's purpose for you and for your family, I just want you to lift your hands as a sign of surrender to him. I want you to cry out to him right now in your own words. They're at home as well. Cry out to him in your own words. And Heavenly Father, we, we know that we were born with purpose. We were made in your image. And our desire is to glorify you with our lives. So Lord, we ask you right now to reveal the power of your purpose. We give you all the praise and honor. And we say, Holy Spirit, speak for your servants are listening. Hallelujah. We want to stay in this moment for a second. Um, we want to invite the prayer team down. If the prayer team wants to come up, if you're in this place, you need prayer. The word spoke to you in a special way. You just need some prayer. We want to invite you down. Uh, but before we leave, there's a few things that, that uh, I want to go over. 
uh, we want to just thank you, Pastor Mondo, always sharing your heart, always loving on this church. Mercy Culture, we don't take an offering, but we do take this time to just thank you for your generous giving. This is such a generous church, and we, we do have, if you're wondering how you can give, and there's three ways that you can give. You can text the word GIVE to 817-835-9090. You can go on our website, mercyculture.com slash give, and you can give there, or you can leave um, your offering in the black boxes that are at each exit of the building. Also, if you're in here and you want to sow into the ministry of Pastor Mondo, um, you heard him earlier, he has nine kids, and uh, I, I have two, and it's pretty crazy. So if you want to sow into that ministry, you can just, you, you, can, you can go on our website, or, uh, or you can text speaker to the same number, 817-835-9090, or you can go on our website and on the speaker tab on mercyculture.com slash give, you can give there. We're also excited for our Heart for Mercy coming up on June 7th. Uh, we are asking that you just seek the Lord for what he would have you give. You heard the awesome testimony from the Rangers. Uh, my family and I have similar testimonies of moments where God has called us to give. And, and we've just seen his tremendous blessing upon everything that we've been obedient to. Uh, coupled with that, we do have a cork board in MC Central that we're asking you, for what miracles are you believing God for? In this season of miracles, what are you believing God for? I was there earlier, and I was just looking at some of the things that people put. We have a lot of people believing for homes in here, and, and, and the Lord just said, um, if, I, if I can share this, for those people believing for homes, I just had this in my spirit. He said, because you've made this home uh, a place where he can call home, he's going to bless you. If you receive that, I'm one of those people that said, I want a home. So I received it as well. So we want to do that. Um, also, we have a special guest next week. You don't want to miss at both services, 9 and 1130. We are having um, Eric Johnson from Bethel Church. It's going to be a tremendous time. You don't want to miss it. We thank you. We love you. And before, uh, before we leave, let's pray our benediction. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord. We love you. Lord, teach us your ways that we, wait, that we may know you and find favor. We love you, Holy Spirit, for meeting us in this place and always being here. We thank you. Amen. Mercy Culture, we love you. Thank you for joining us today. Have a blessed weekend. Thank you for being with us today. We want to hear what God is doing in your life. So feel free to share on social media and tag Mercy Culture. For more information and to stay connected, follow us on social media or visit mercyculture.com.